So hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. We're gonna to be doing just a quick interview with the equity team at the Pascack Valley Regional High School District. And I'm Jared, I'm one of the editors in chief of the Trailblazer, so is Mackenzie. And then we have Ava Henrich and Jasmine Delgado. They're both juniors at Hills and they're members of the equity team. So we just wanted to join today kind of to talk about like the recent events that have been unfolding in our country, starting with the killing of George Floyd, an African-American man while in police custody. And we kind of wanted to talk about like Hill's response to it, the equity team's response to it directly and all the things of that nature. So I guess we'll start off by asking just for you guys to introduce like what the equity team is, like when it was created and stuff like that. I, whoever wants to do that, you're welcome to. So the equity team consists of members from all different grade levels, and it was just created this year, but I'm pretty sure that it had been kind of talked about for previous years. Um, and it's just a group of students that come together to talk about the school and like in any inequality that's going on um, to make it really a place where people feel comfortable and where they step in and they're really proud to be a Hills Cowboy. Yeah, to speak more about that, we used to be just Hills for a few months when we were working. Um, we were going through data that we took through our school climate survey, trying to figure out how to improve conditions at Pascag Hills. And eventually after these recent events, um, we decided to join with the Pascag Valley equity team. So now we're kind of just one big district one. Mm -hmm. Cool, so my first other question is just personally like both of you guys individually what was your reaction to the killing of george floyd and what have you guys done like personally about it jasmine do you want to start you want me to start yeah i'll tell totally <laughs> you guys i don't care um i guess i'll go um when i heard about it obviously i was extremely devastated um and i'm just tired of it happening all the time and even it not being on the news and it takes so many people and protests for people to finally hear what others have to say about this. Um, and I don't think that there would be as much justice for him, for George Floyd, if not for these protests that have been happening worldwide. And I think that's what makes me so sad is that somebody has to be there witnessing and videotaping somebody dying for people to listen to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to speak more about that, obviously, the, this wasn't the first incident like this, but because of social media so much lately, this was kind of the ones that blew up that everyone saw. So I was really thankful for social media to be able to educate myself because, as Jasmine said, it wasn't being talked about a lot on the news and not a lot of the news was accurate. Um, the district wasn't talking about it at all. So if it weren't for social media and being able to educate myself through all of the links being posted there, I really wouldn't be able to know what was going on. So that was kind of like my main source for everything. Mm -hmm. awesome. So moving on to the next question, which you guys already touched on a little bit, but why do you think these incidents, incidences of police brutality and racism continue at such a persistent rate? Um, I think a lot of it has to do with um, the reason the George Floyd one was so um, widely recognized is because it was filmed. So I think being able to recognize that it happened isn't always the case. Like not all of these incidents are filmed. So no one really knows that they're always happening. And the concept of the police, it's just the amount of power they're given and the amount of immunity that they're given within um, the criminal system. Like you can see after all of these protests, that's what it took for every one of the um, cops related to the incident with George Floyd to be able to be arrested um, for what they did. So I think a lot of it has to do with just because of where they are in society and the power they've been given, they're really immune to what's going on and no one really recognizes it because they're kind of blind to the fact that these people can be bad too. So I think that's probably one of the main issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's also because if it happens in like a small town or something like that, it's not going to go worldwide and it's not going to be seen on the news. Whereas if it's broadcasted everywhere, I mean, I don't think that cops would be pushing it as far as they are, if that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, so kind of going off of that, you guys talked about like kind of the issues that are at hand with like the shootings and police brutality that happens in our country. So in regards to those issues, what is the equity team done or been planning to do about it at Hills, not to solve police brutality, obviously, but just to kind of make an impact and things like that, if you could describe some of those actions you're taking. I mean, uh, <laughs> we wanted to obviously show solidarity and protest, but with this whole coronavirus thing, we also want to make sure that nobody's being like put in like harm's way or anything like that. So we're planning, we can talk about this, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're about, we're going to tell people anyways. So All right. <laughs> um, well, on Monday, we were planning on protesting by writing the people's names that have been killed due to police brutality um, on all of the parking spots at Pascag Hills. And because we joined forces with Valley, we were also planning on going to their school and writing it like where the entrance of the school is um, and in the center saying like, say their names so that when people drive by and like pick up things, it's just, it, it's so important that we realize that it's not just George Floyd or these people that we see on the news. It's so many other individuals and their families that have been affected by it. It's not another number statistic. It's a person. And we really want to emphasize that. Mm -hmm. and, in the, <laughs> and in the connection um, to the school, what are your thoughts on the administrations, mostly Demarai and Gunderson, and their emails and statements on the unrest that's currently happening? Well, the reason that we sent out that giant district-wide email that went to every grade, all the administration, everything, was because they were remaining silent. And it wasn't really the first time we had seen them remain silent. This, is ha this has happened with other traumatic events that weren't police brutality. This has happened with school shootings, other things, and they just haven't really shown a lot of support. And what really pushed us to finally send the email, send it at 10 a.m. on Tuesday, is because um, as of that time, no one had really spoken, but then we got Demaray's email, and it didn't even say George Floyd's name. It just kind of vaguely talked about it, and it also said, it talked about it as if, oh, if we were in school together, like, we'd be helping each other through that, um, but we're not, so sorry and not only did we think that was kind of untrue like if we were together in school we really don't believe that we would be helping each other through it at all because they haven't done that in the past but also just the blatant like not recognizing his name or what it actually was or what happened um so we were kind of sad that it fell on our shoulders to have to recognize it outright and say his name and talk about what happened without hesitating without worrying about controversy but that's what really pushed us, seeing that they were trying to, you know, silence themselves and not support us. Mm -hmm. And once you sent that email, I, I assume it was written kind of by all of you, or did, did all of you contribute to it? Or Yeah, it was pretty much all of mm -hmm. us. So how did, um, did Demaray or Wieland or any other administrators respond to the email? Do you know any of their thoughts on what you said? Yeah, they actually got back to us. And I think that's something that is extremely important is that administrators understand their their faults and that they haven't been acting on things that are so important um, because this is like a really tricky thing to have a conversation about. And it's not easy and everybody understands that. But in order to move forward, we need to have these conversations and students' voices need to be heard. Um, and I feel like because of this coronavirus and everything like that, it's an even more important to come together right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we um, we did get responses from Demaray and from Gunderson and from Wheeland. And I really did appreciate that in their responses, they were very, um, they showed a lot of humility in what they said. And they recognized like, yeah, we didn't say anything. We're sorry. Like, we're sorry you felt this way. And we thank you for doing something. And we look forward to working with you. So I really appreciate that they were open about it. Like they weren't trying to shut us down or anything like that. They're like, okay, we recognize that this is something we did wrong and we wish we did something more. So we look forward to working with you to improve it in the future. So I really appreciated that. And going into the specifics of your email, you guys stated that both schools have had a history of remaining silent or providing inadequate responses during disturbing events. 
That's a quote that you guys had in your email. Which events or responses were you referring to? I know you touched on that already, but if you want to touch on it again and just talk about it. Um, well, personally, one of the ones that I mainly remember, um, for people who don't know, I'm from Woodcliffe Lake, and I was from the grade that Alyssa Aladef was from before she moved to Florida. And for, again, those of you who don't know, she was one of the people who died in the Parkland shooting. And I remember that day, we all came to school, we wore red because we found out, um, and they said nothing. At the very end of the day, they made an announcement, and they were like, oh, we're sorry, like, we just found out, like, we'll help you through it. They did not help us through it at all. Like, this was someone we had grown up with, we knew them, and they died, and they did not help us at all. And this year, usually on Valentine's Day, they do a, you know, here's a moment of silence for what happened and forever and to remember. It didn't happen this year. Like, two years was enough for you to get past it. It wasn't enough for us to get past it. So that's kind of one of the biggest ones that stands out to me personally, just because that was something I was affected by. And I know other people from Book of Lake were affected by it even worse and they didn't really help us through it. Yeah, I know so many kids who knew Alyssa, were friendly with her. And I, I, I totally remember exactly that day you're talking about. I mean, we're talking about like so many events at once here that I feel like, like, do you guys think they're all connected? Like. What do you think the broader response is to how the school, how the district can respond to these events? Because, I mean, police brutality is separate from gun violence, but they also at the same time, they aren't connect, they aren't not connected. So like, how, what's like the broader response that you guys are planning on doing or you think the administration to, sh should do in order to create for a better community here at Hills? As I stated before, I, I really think that we need to start talking with one another because it's very apparent that the teachers and administration really haven't been listening to the students and the cries. Um, or maybe not that they haven't been listening, but also they haven't been there to provide a safe space to have a conversation with students and how they feel. Um, so I think with the equity team, we really just want to talk with the administration and all together see each other's point of views. Um, cause I think it's so important because in order to move on, we need to see how one another view the world. Um, so I think that we're going to try to have a lot more conversations about tricky subjects like police brutality and racism and everything like that. Yeah. Talking more about that. Again, like the communication, as Jasmine just said, all of that and education is kind of what we're trying to push for before kids can form opinions, which is really what Pascal Kills should be about. It's about educating us so we can go off in the world as informed individuals who can make their own opinions and help try to improve the world. But before that happens, we need to be able to communicate with the people above us and we need to be educated. So what we're trying to push for is a more open communication, like Jasmine said, and also more education within our curriculum. No matter how that gets implemented, kids need to be able to know what's going on. And even if that's something that the school district has to somewhat force us to do to educate ourselves or to be educated, it's really important for us to be able to go into the world and know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like too often what we've been seeing is that students have been having to do a lot of research on their own. Um, and it's like, how do you expect us to do research on something that we don't even know is happening? Um, so I think it's really important that the teachers teach all different point of views and perspectives of history because it's so once it can be so one sided. Um, so that's why I feel like, again, teachers, you're the ones that are there to help guide us in the world. And we shouldn't be teaching ourselves things about our, our history or our culture in a sense. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you think these issues that are affecting like the broader, like our broader country, like how we respond to them, do you think they're affected by like our community, like it, how, what it's com like the people, the type of people it's composed of and things like that? Because obviously we're not the most diverse town. We're not the most diverse high school in the country. I mean, do you think that affects how our school is able to respond to these things? I would say yes. Um, I think especially looking at this incident um, and with the message of all cops are bad going around a lot, um, we don't have a very diverse population, but what we do have is a very large population of people who are policemen, people who are firefighters, people who are involved with law enforcement or the military of some kind. So I think the reason behind a lot of the school's hesitation around talking about this issue specifically and sounding bias towards one side or the other 
is from that population because a lot of even the parents are involved with the police force. So I think they're trying to look out for how they're represented to them because they're not trying to start controversy, which is understandable, but at some point it needs to happen. So I think yeah. that's all our questions. <laughs> You guys have covered it all. Thank you so much for just coming out and t speaking with us and sharing all this information. It's really important that we continue having these discussions. And we're just really glad that you guys were able to come on here and start a discussion with us. Thank you, guys. <laughs>